name is Nancy Dieli. We're here at Francia Lab at the University of Texas at El Paso. Today, I'm going to be teaching you how to make and run a mini agarose jump. This process is usually separated into three parts. The first is making the gel, the second is running the gel, and finally, visualizing and taking pictures of your jump. The materials you will need for this process are electrophoresis buffer. In this case, we're going to be using TAE. You're going to need some agros, ETBR solution, your 10% 10 times loading buffer, your DNA ladder, your sample, of course, and the gel casting apparatus. You will also need a power supply and a microphone. The first part is preparing the gel. For the mini gel that we're making, we're going to be using a 50, mil 50 milliliters of volume, and we're going to be making a 1% agarose concentration. We started off with 50 times TAE, but we need 1 times TAE. So we're going to dilute 10 milliliters of 50 times TAE into 500 ml of double distilled water. You want to cover the graduated cylinder with some parafilm. Make sure that's wrapped around there really well. And then you mix. Since, we're get, since, this, since the volume that we need is 50 ml, you but want you to measure out 50 ml of your 1 times TAE. Then you want to pour that into your Erlenmeyer flask. No, you just put it in the room and focus on the water. No, I don't want to get the water. Cool. Okay. 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 And then you just want to pour in the agros into the Erzemeyer flask with your one times CAE solution. Okay. Okay. A helpful tip that I learned is to not mix the solution before heating it up. Then you want to microwave it, microwave it in 30 second intervals oh. and be careful um, to monitor it so that it doesn't boil over. <laughs> Our agro solution is ready to be microwaved. You can use a standard microwave for this procedure. Remember to be careful that your agro solution doesn't boil over while you're heating it up. A way to prevent this is by heating it up in 30 second intervals. After the first round of heating, we're going to check if our agarose has melted. So I'm going to take it, swirl it a little bit, and check if it's fully melted. I can still see some particles that have not fully dissolved, so I'm going to heat it for another 30 seconds. Once again, we want to check our agros. Take it out carefully because it is very hot. Swirl it and inspect for any particles. I can't see any more particles, so our agros is ready. <laughs> After you have melted your agros, wait for it to cool to 60 degrees Celsius or until it's warm to the, to the touch. Now, we're going to add ethidium bromide into our agarose solution to be able to visualize the DNA in our gel. 
You have to be careful with the sodium bromide because it is highly mutagenic. So when handling this compound, always wear gloves. For this, we're not going to need any more than 5 microliters. And right now I'm just going to add 4. A helpful tip that I learned is that ethidium bromide will load itself into the agarose solution. All you have to do is place your loaded tip into the solution and wait for it to dispense. Just place your tip into the solution and it will load itself. Our agar solution can set um, quite quickly, so you want to pour it as soon as you're done adding the ethidium bromide. To before pouring the agar solution into the gel apparatus, you want to seal it with your gel casting gates. <laughs> And then slowly pour your agro solution and be careful not to form any bubbles. If you do happen to form bubbles, you can use a clean pipette tip to move them out of the way or pop them. Now you want to add your combs and wait for it to set. This usually takes about 20 minutes. While we wait for our gel to set, let's prepare our DNA samples. You want to prepare your samples to a volume that will not overflow your wells. Because we're making a, a mini gel, I'm going to add 5 microliters of my DNA sample and mix that with 3 microliters of my 10 times loading buffer. So we just added our DNA, now we're going to add our 10 times loading buffer so we can visualize it moving in the jump, so we can know when it's done. Uh, before adding this, for this one I have to warm it up to 36 degrees Celsius for 10 to 15 seconds and make sure to mix it before adding it to you, before creating your sample. So I'm just going to take 3 microliters of this. And add it to your DNA sample. It's been about 20 minutes and our gel is set. The way you can tell is that the gel turns from a clear liquid to an opaque colorless solid. And now we're going to take out the combs. Be very careful when removing your combs. You don't want to tear your sample wells. Just lift vertically. You will feel some resistance but keep pulling. Now that our combs are out, I'm going to pour in the electrophoresis buffer. Before doing this, you need to remove your gel casting gates.
for electrophoresis on each side of the tank. I'm going to pour up to the max line because you need to cover approximately 2 milliliters of your gel with the electrophoresis buffer. This is just to help the electricity run a little bit more easily. Now we're ready to load our samples into each one of the wells. I'm going to load approximately 9 microliters of sample into each one of the wells. You don't want to load any bubbles into the sample. If you do see air in your pipette tip, just push out. Sometimes I get shaky hands, so to help me with this problem is I place my elbow firmly onto the countertop and I use my left hand to guide my pipette tip into the well. Load your sample carefully into one of the wells. Try not to load it on the first outermost wells because I've seen that they tend to not run so well. Also, leave one of your wells available for a DNA ladder. Your loading buffer has glycerol in it, so it'll help your sample float down into the well. Be careful to not tear your welds. Well, then without being too... Yeah, no, we can go for lunch and then that making. Bad idea, yeah. We're, no one's going to make this. Right now. now that we loaded our sample and our DNA marker, we're ready to run the gel. Just cover your gel apparatus. Match the black and red plugs. Seal that well. Careful to not move your gel. Now we're ready to run the gel. Plug in your leads into your power supply. Make sure that it's plugged into the wall. Turn it on. Because this is a mini gel, we're going to run it at 70 volts. And start. So now we're running our gel. You'll know that the gel is running because you'll see bubbles forming on the ends of the tank. This will take, the gel run will take approximately 40 minutes, but you can also know when your gel is done because you'll see the dye that you loaded into your sample wells migrate about three-fourths of the way into the gel. So our gel has finished running. We're, I'm just going to take it out of the tank. Make sure to unplug the leads before doing this, or else you might get electrocuted. Now carefully take out your gel. I'm just going to dry it off, but remember that all of this is contaminated with ethidium bromide, so you, you need to be careful. I'm going to transfer it to this plastic wrap. And we're going to take it downstairs for our visualization. Now we're going to visualize our gel. We need to check in before using any instrument. We've already done that. So now we're going to move on to this off point. Always use a Kim point because you don't want to contaminate the computer. The first thing we do is log in 
with your miner's username and password. After that, you want to open the Quantity 1 software. If you get lost at any time during this process, there's instructions here that can guide you along the way. Next, we're going to go to File, GelDoc XR. Open that. Once the software is ready, we need to open our tray, load your gel, place it in the center, and close. Because this is a fluorescent sample, you want to click on the Trans UV button. After you have your tray inside, you can adjust the zoom focus features as you like. You can also use the acquire image and optimize display features on the software to try to get the best image possible. Afterwards, you'll want to print. Uh, before printing, make sure that you're sending it to the Mitsubishi printer. It will say Mitsubishi P93D. Um, once you send it to print, Press the copy button on the Mitsubishi printer and it will be ready for you. And that's it. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for our next video.